Hello everybody, it's Friday and that means it's time for another topic of the week. Starting us off, standard preamble, um, thank you to you to everybody who submitted on last week's topic which was Wargaming as Therapy and there were some truly, truly amazing responses. Um, people shared a lot of their personal story, their personal journey and how much the hobby has meant to them. Um, I don't even know if I really have rights to relate any piece of their story because everyone's story was their own. Um, but there were several that I thought were just really good and should be watched because uh, I think that it's easy as we talk about different games and, and different editions and different whatever to sort of, you know, create little camps and, and not really think about the feelings of the people on the other side of the, the, the aisle, um, whatever that distinction or division happens to be. But one of the reasons that I was really keenly wanting to do that topic was because this hobby is really unique in the amount of sort of time it takes and the way it brings us all together um, under this banner of, of hobbying. And I think that watching all of those made me, one, realize that everybody's got their own personal journey and, you know, to, to honestly count myself quite lucky. I mean, I'll be very frank. Two, um, that yes, what we're doing is a game and it's often throwaway and silly or whatever, but it can also be very important and meaningful and we shouldn't shy away from that, right? Um, embrace it. Uh, embrace how important, how deep of an experience this can be in your and others' lives. And three is always, you know, respect your fellow people on their hobby journey because you don't know what they went through to bring them to that point, okay? So seeing how good it was and how much it meant, the last thing we ever want to do is uh, force anybody out of the hobby through our attitude. I say open those arms wide and let's welcome as many people into this amazing community um, as we can. As usual, that video will be linked down below so you can go back to it and of course all of the responses are linked there. So go watch those, I, I really mean that. Some of them um, I'm not going to lie, some of them are, are hard to watch in the best way. Um, I, I just mean that in that the stories are very personal and true, and can, and a few of them are honestly fairly heartbreaking. But um, the fact that the hobby was there, that this has been there, and that this community is here has, has helped the, the, you know, the, the, those people get through, and I think that's awesome. So, preamble out of the way, let's turn to this week's topic of the week. And after that one, we need something a little more light, and so I want to talk about armies. So, mm, that new book smell. All right, so this just came out this last week. And I don't know how many, it's, this is, I thought this was a rather good deal. Like my store sells everything cheap, so I got this for about 26 bucks. And what's obviously, it's, I'm sure you've seen reviews on it. It's just a lot of the War Scrolls, right? So it just contains like a lot of the actual War Scrolls printed out. And since, as William Page said, I am an old man living in Amish country, apparently, I like, um, I like paper. What can I say? I don't like to look at these on my phone. But what's really interesting to me about this, and I'm sure people are, are aware of this, but just in case you're not, let's, let's flip to the table of contents, which you won't be able to see. So I don't know why I'm holding it up, but here we are. Um, this isn't divided as per the old army books. This is the Faction of Chaos, Grand Alliance Chaos, and instead it's divided into 21 different little mini-factions. You know, like there's not Beastmen, it's Brayherds and Warherds and stuff like that, right? Um, Dragon Ogres get their own thing under Thunderscorn, and all the, a lot of the old Chaos Warrior, sort of generic Chaos Warrior stuff is now the Slaves to Darkness, right? And so on and so forth. So here's what I want to ask with this book. The more I thought about this, okay, and sort of read through these scrolls. There are some new rules around some of the scrolls in here. I think this book was amazing. Um, beautiful art, awesome pictures and models, all that kind of stuff. But the more I read through that and those 21 groupings, the more I realized that the old world, we, we know the old world's dead. That's it's not a surprise. But the old world's way of dividing armies is dead. And the more I thought about that, the more excited I was about it. When we talk about Age of Sigmar, we tend to still talk often in terms of like the old way that things were divided. And certainly when they released the initial group of scrolls, that's how they released them, which would make sense. It's a transition. 
But what this shows me and what the recent releases have showed me when we look at things is that a lot of things can be divided differently, right? You've got this micro faction of Fire Slayers and assumingly we'll get the other dwarves at some point in time. Chaos, you've got, you know, like I said, the Slaves to Darkness or so on and so forth. You've got like the, the Pleasure Seekers or whatever that are the, the Slanesh, both mortals and demons. Um, and as I thought about that, I really got excited because of course we all know that sort of one of the promises of Age of Sigmar is that you can build and play with smaller forces. And we've been playing around, a lot of people have been playing around with, especially like tournaments and list building of sometimes having the faction to be the roll up instead of the old army. But now when I thought about collecting and building new forces, you know, previously I had to think, well, I, there's some models from high elves I like, but I don't really like all the high elf models. I don't really want to get a high elf army or something, whatever the, the, the example is. I don't really like much of any of the high elves. Um, but I love an army with a good narrative behind it. And what something like this and those micro factions let you do is sort of combine those, those scrolls, those, those figs together in whatever way into a cohesive army for you. For example, I'm, I've kind of been building some beast men, and I was trying to decide where to go with them. Like, I've got some gore, I've got my beast lords and shamans, I've got a giant. But I didn't really know where I wanted to go next. I hate the beast chariots, and, uh, you know, I didn't really want to drop a lot of money on minotaurs, but I just, I wanted, but, you know, I was trying to figure out what do I do next. And the more I thought about it, and somebody mentioned this to me of like, what if you went monsters? And interestingly, in here, where you have both the beast men and stuff like that, monsters are like, their own section. There's just this big section that is just chaos monsters. And I was like, oh man. And see, if you even look, it's really funny. In the chaos monster section, if you can see, oops, there we go. If you can see the slaughter brute and the vortex beast, look who's down there in the picture with them over there on the side. Who is that right there? Oops. I can't figure out which finger it is, but whatever. Backwards. It's gore. Jeez, that was a long way to go for that. Um, and so. I thought, oh, wouldn't that be neat if I had a bunch of, like, Beastman-themed monsters, especially since the Shaman summons monsters. It really seems like it fits. Beastmen love big, weird monsters. They get around with them. What if I did a bunch of stuff like that? Like, what if I took Dragon Ogres, which to me always felt more Beastmen anyways. I think they might have been in Beasts of Chaos at one point in time, way in the past. Just things have moved around. And what if I did, like, some cool Dragon Ogres as Beastmen type of things? Um, and that started getting me really excited to collect a new force. So, there we go. That was a long way around to get to this one. But I have a lot of thoughts on it. This week's topic of the week. Should we stop only thinking about armies in terms of the old dead delineations? Do you want to see the old delineations gone completely and only the new sort of microcosm being how we think about it? Um, are you excited about these new splits in the forces, or do you prefer the, the old way of thinking about it? Does everything have to be in its little silo and it can't be broken up? Um, if you do think it could be broken up and combined, what does that free you up to collect that you might not have ever done before? What would be your fun, weird combination? Um, you know, still within maybe a faction, and certainly with a good story. There's no power gaming in Age of Sigmar. Um, so what's your... What's your... What's your division? What's your army? You always wanted to have a little from column A and a little from column B and a little from column C or something, but you just couldn't do it before that now you could be empowered to do. So, there you go. That's the topic. Uh, Age of Sigmar, new force divisions. Pro or against, excited about it, want to see those along with the old ones, and in this world, what's the unique force that you want to build and make your own? So, Look forward to your responses. As always, they will be posted down below, and uh, we'll see you next time.